Hey guys, look what I got. Alright guys, as you can see, there isn't too much to the packaging. It comes with batteries, AA batteries, which I actually prefer. I know a lot of folks are not happy that it doesn't come with rechargeables because I just use the straight alkaline. Uh, I had did not have good success with the ones that came with my DX6i, so I think that's okay. And there are also packs available that I saw online because I hear that this does drain the batteries pretty quickly so that is an option that uh, you can explore now the owner's manual is quite thick and that means that this is a very capable radio full of a lot of different features and a lot of different ways it can be programmed so know that that is an option and hopefully I will be able to touch on some of the key key things that this can do in this review okay guys so I've got it out of the box and the first thing I noticed that it feels really nice in my hands unlike the DX6i which is the one that I'm accustomed to this has nice rubber grips it feels a lot more ergonomic in my hand uh, I plan to do a direct comparison video between those two radios here at some point in the future. Right now I'm going to focus mostly just on the unboxing and review of this. So in addition to looking cool and feeling nice in your hands, it can look even cooler in action. So you've got this backlit display and you've got voice alerts which are great. Uh, some folks that have done that enjoy that quite a bit. This thing also has telemetry. Not only that, um, I'm not sure if you could do it on the DX6i, but there's directions in this manual on how to raise these throttle sticks, which it comes with a little Allen wrench. And you can either raise the thumbstick or lower it down. Gives you that option. You can also pull off one of these sides, I can't remember which it is, and you can adjust the tension and the sticks. Now the other really cool thing, there are lots of cool things that I'm finding out with this thing. Uh, when you increase the throttle, I'm not sure if you can see that, you can see how it tells you what percentage of it that you're doing, which is great. And it also starts the clock automatically. Now, one downside to the backlit light is that you've got a situation where it only allows you to keep it on for 30 seconds. Now, I don't know how to uh, keep it on longer than that, which the beauty of that would be flying and not having a backlit light, not having it turn on and then shut off on you in the middle of flight. Not really understanding that concept, but it, the settings that are available are... 30 in a minute. I'm going to see if there's a way to figure that out and, and get that longer, but that's what it appears at first glance. Um, yeah, so I think it's pretty cool. And I'm really excited that it tells me the percentage of throttle and that the timer starts on its own. There's so many times when I have been flying and forgot to hit the switch on my DX6i, which is a trainer switch, to kick off that timer. And now I don't have to worry about that. So I've got a little update for you guys. Uh, you know when I said that the backlight was only available on up to 60 seconds? Well, I was wrong. It can be on off on, which is where I'm going to leave it, 
I may back that percentage off a little bit because it, it does seem to suck the battery quite a bit. And you can set it for a multitude of seconds. 60 seconds when you turn it on. I'm not sure. I understand uh, it being like that. But you've got the flexibility, and that's good. So I'm going to turn it to on. Just that down. Really doesn't need to be that bright, and most of the conditions I've been doing it could serve a little battery. And back to the list. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take a look and see how the radio fits inside a very popular soft case even though it's got some hardness it's still considered a soft case there are some cases that are literally made of metal that people just chuck into their vehicle and that protects the radio this isn't quite that advanced but it has offered some pretty good protection on my DX6i let's see if this works I was told by Greg H that this works we'll see alright so it appears to fit in there pretty well there's a little extra space over here. Uh, if I move that over that way, that might help even that out a little bit. It's not going to fit super snug, but I think it will do okay. I'm going to zip it up now, and let's see how it goes. Well, it appears that Greg was telling the truth. Uh, it is actually a little bit looser in there than I thought it would be. But that's also because it has been used by a different radio, which is probably just a little bit different. Uh, but it should offer good protection, especially if there's a new one. It should probably do a good job as well. So up next, we are going to bind a plane to this and see how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to bind my first plane. I've got this set in bind mode plane that I'm going to attempt to bind is my very first RC plane, the Hobby Zone Champ. And I'm going to select it right now. Binding. DSM 2 22 milliseconds 1024 resolution. Bind complete. And it worked. What do you know? It worked. Awesome. Alright, up next is a summary of my unboxing and review. Alright, so this is a summary of my overall initial impressions of this radio. Or transmitter, or whatever you want to call it. The Spectrum DX6. Alright, so I normally like to start with the cons and I'll do that this time. Uh, it seems to draw a lot of battery power over a very short period of time and that I would kinda heard that but I didn't think it would be this excessive so to me that's a pretty big con. I do still like the radio overall but that to me I'm gonna have to buy some stock and energizer or something because that's that's it's pretty excessive. I've only been dinking around making this video for a little while, maybe 45 minutes or so, and the battery voltage has gone down from 6.2, I believe, down to 5.7, and I haven't had it on the entire time, so that that scares me quite a bit. I may have to turn that backlight light off, otherwise I'm going to go through way too many batteries way too quickly. Alright, so the other thing is... And depending on where you are in the hobby, this could either be a good thing or a bad thing. There are so many options available on this radio, it's not beginner friendly in my opinion. I would recommend the DX6i if someone's going for a 6 channel, or a radio they can grow into over this one, because it's there's so many options, so many ways that you can mess up. So, in my opinion, and that's a con, I the price point's not bad, um, but for a 
beginner, I don't think this is the radio for you yet. It's definitely something that if you really want to stretch yourself and if you had a friend that was able to help you out and help you navigate through it, it may be a good radio to grow into. Uh, but I don't think it's a good beginner radio, my opinion. All right, so let's go to the positives because there are a lot of positives about this. Looks great, feels great. It's got 250 model memory. I don't care who you are, you're not going to fill that up. But if you're crazy enough and a big enough uh, RC fan, RC flight fan to fill up 250 models, you can expand it. That's huge. That's huge. I, I can't even explain how excited I am about that because that's the main reason that I, I bought this. My DX6i has been great. It's been reliable. It's been there for me. However, I find myself overriding the models in there. It only holds 10. I've got way more than that. For those of you that subscribe to my channel, you know that I have a lot more planes and helicopters, if you include all that, than just 10. I haven't even added it up recently, but it's a lot more than that. All right, so the other thing, which can be a con, you know, with the battery, now it's down to 5.6 volts, is the backlight. That's going to be great on those days when it's really glary and you just can't see. So that will help a lot. Or when it, the sun's just about to go down and you want to be able to see what's going on. All right. So the other cool thing is, are the voice alerts, which make it so you don't necessarily have to use the backlit light as much as you would with, say, the DX6i if that had that option. So in summary, I like this. There are a few cons, a few things I need to work through, get used to it, because like I said, there are a lot of things that are included in it. But overall, I like it. I'm excited. Look for more videos like this. As I continue to learn more about this, I'm going to make more videos, more how-to videos are in my plans. And if you want to check those out, subscribe. That way you can be first in line. Thanks a lot. And this is GB Linden checking out.